The Turtles get an adversary from the pages of Archie. Here's your look at the new NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures Slash. The wait is finally over. NECA is proud to announce the new Slash figure based on Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures comic book series from Archie Comics. This solitary mutant turtle from Palmadice isn't as evil as he is ecologically dedicated. Driven mad by the needless destruction of his paradise planet for the presidential palace, the sinister Slash will take his vengeance on authority figures across the galaxy. Before we see what adventures lie in store for Slash... I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA that did provide this sample of the Eastman and Lair Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventure Slash that we can have a look at in this video. Uh, he's available right now if you guys are interested to pick this one up for yourself. I'm going to go ahead then and follow up that with grabbing my tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. From the bottom of his feet to the top of his head, uh, Adventures Slash stands five and a quarter inches in height or the figure's 13 centimeters tall. And to see other samples of Slash, here's what the figure looks like next to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time Slash, who up to the point of releasing the adventures was my go-to Slash when it came to displaying him on the shelf. I'm not even just meaning displaying along with the other Turtles in Time Turtles, but he was my go-to Slash for a long time. He's going to be replaced now. And here's also what he looks like against the Turtles cartoon Slash, who I always felt to be the inferior Slash for me, I was my go-to for Slash when I was growing up was always the Playmates toys Slash. So the one that we got from the cartoon not only didn't sound like Slash, but he didn't look anything like how I recognized the character. In the off chance that any of you are actually interested in this as well, Slash gets packaged along with technically a diorama. The diorama is more so just actually a cardboard sheet. But if you pull it out, however, you can actually have this displayed behind the turtle figures. I haven't done it with all my turtle figures, but some of the ones they've done lately here, uh, the one, for example, the one I'm thinking of is Rennet. I've actually used the backdrop that came included with Rennet as a display piece to have displayed along the back of the figures. Now, obviously, it's not going to fit completely. You, even when you open up the sides, one side you can see it sort of has the cutout here. That would have been the side window of the box. You can trim off the sides and use just really essentially the backdrop. And then again, the flooring and have the figure standing in front of that for again. Anybody that was interested. Move that to the side, though. Let's get a closer look, though, at Slash. The figure's a bit back-heavy, so I'm hoping he's not going to take a tumble while we have a look at the rest of the accessories. The figure comes included, for example, with a crooked side. The side, you can see, is nicely sculpted here, mostly done in white, but a half-and-half half treatment's been done. One side is white, one side is blue. And down the middle of that, you actually got yourself some broken-up panel lining, stopping abruptly, of course, whenever it meets a corner. This does get fit into his hand, but there is a, a technique I've noticed myself when it comes to actually changing out the hands and actually holding the accessories. Leave it with me. I'll talk about that more in a moment. The handle, though, is nicely done here. You can see some additional brown gets afforded. You can see as well they've painted in some lines of black. It's a nice looking sigh. Just as a side note also, I'm not going to beeline too far away from actually talking about the figure here, but for me growing up, I was into the Archie Turtle comics. The Mirage stuff got more read later into my years, but actually as a kid, I was always collecting the Archie comics. I think I even had the first 15 issues or so, which was a small feat for me, at least as a kid. It was one comic run that I, I could tell myself, yes, I have issue one and all the variations of issue one, and then I had all the way up again to, I think, about issue 12 to 15. I wish I still had those comics. The other thing that the figure comes also included with as well is a Kasui Gama. Uh, it's a, basically a hook blade, and it's actually done in the same sort of color palette as the Crooked Psy. Again, some nice use of blue, although the blue doesn't actually make any appearance on the blade or the hook itself. Rather, instead, the blue actually comes down below more in the handle area, but it matches a very similar color scheme to the Psy he also wields in his hand. There is no other place on the figure we can actually store the accessories. There's no loop or anything on the back of the figure shelf, for example, that can store the Psy or the Kasuagami. Instead, what you can actually have it displayed is in his hands. Now, right now, the figure does come stock out of the packaging with closed fists. It's not really going to be very helpful, certainly when it comes to him holding either one of these. But he does come at least with gripping hands. The hands I really like, certainly first for, for just the color alone. This swamp green does quite work well. And again, the actual fingernails, they've outlined nicely in that black panel lining. 
the black panel lining is the really one star of the show when it comes to here for Slash. All the features then the thing we're, we're going to be looking at when it comes to sculpting get all popped with an initial treatment of the panel lining done around all of the features. That includes all the little warts and stuff he has all over his body. Before we actually get down to that, the figure also comes with mauling hands. I jokingly always say mauling hands, but it certainly does look like somebody's going to be mauling something, like a turtle's head, for example. And again, these can be swapped out in the sockets of his forearms. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the way he holds his weapons. For all intents and purposes, you would just pop the hands on either side of Slash's forearms and then just replace them with these hands. Then from there, you would just take, I know I'm stating the obvious, you're just going to take the weapon and you're going to put it into his hands. I would certainly suggest as well, if you're having problems getting the weapons into his hand, to heat the hands first in hot water, which is certainly something I did first. The plastic, granted, has cooled a little bit, so I'm going to have to probably assist the plastic just a little bit. But the hands do hold the weapons well. What I would certainly suggest, though, is before you jump to right away swapping out the hands and then thinking later you're going to be putting the weapons into his hands, one thing I did want to point out with Slash is the very obvious points that he's got sticking out the sides of his wrists. These points are made of a thinner plastic, not to the point that's going to be breaking, but something, though, if you're not careful changing out the hands, most definitely could be breaking. Uh, one thing I would certainly, again, suggest that you do. First of all, just remove the hand carefully, wiggling and removing it, there we go. Just going to pop the peg from the forearm and put that to the side. Now, for all intents and purposes, what I would normally have said is put the hand in first. And then, of course, you would just put the weapon into his hand. The hard part about it, though, is once you take the hand, you replace it, put it into his forearm. It is really hard, I've noticed, then to take the weapon and then fit it in there. Because the first thing you want to do is always default to putting pressure against the hand when you're fitting it into his grip. This could run the risk of breaking the blade on the side. Rather, instead, what I would recommend that you do, and you don't have to listen to me at all, just ignore my ramblings if you think this is all just crazy talk, but just remove the hand first. Again, just removing it completely from the form. For some reason, this one has this one holds on a little more than the other one. Just again, wiggle it back and forth. There we go, remove the peg. And again, before you think to then change the hand and add the weapon, Put that weapon into the hand first. Then you don't have to worry as much about putting pressure against those those points. And then you can easily pop the hand into the forearm. I found it was helpful. Again, you don't even have to listen to my mamberings. Uh, again, the weapons are very easy to remove once they're in the hand, but I find it's harder to get the weapons into his hand with the hands already in place. Anyways, getting a closer look though at now Slash. I'm not even just saying this either because I grew up reading the Archie comics over the Mirage stuff. But this, for me, is my favorite-looking incarnation of Slash, iteration of, of Slash. Of course, the ones we only have to work with from NECA Toys. Originally, I'm just going to bring back in. The Turtles in Time Slash, for longest time, was my go-to Slash. I even had this guy on display with my Turtle cartoon figures, even though technically he's not the Turtle that appears in the cartoon. You can see, just by comparing the these would be most closest in comparisons. Even like, for example, the backwards, I'm assuming it to be an S, on the front of his belt there as well as the skull and crossbones are also there on the actual belt, all painted somewhat similar in color scheme. The shell is a little bit different from one another. The Archie version of Slash actually does go with more an all green, and then panel lining into that. If you are a fan, though, of the Turtles in Time Slash, what you then get treated to instead is sort of a pixelated look that's not only across the front of his, or the back of his shell, but it's also down the sides of his arm and sides of his legs as well. He also has a little bit of that, obviously, in the torso as well. The head sculpt was great on the original Turtles in Time Slash, but again, he wasn't as big as I would have hoped him to be. Now, obviously, when you're comparing the two, the Archie version, the Archie Adventures version of Slash, is a bigger, beefier build Slash, and one I like a lot more. Uh, one other thing, again, I can do is bring in the one that came included for the, the Turtles cartoon release. Uh, granted, I do got the laser, uh, got the laser gun in his hand, but still, uh, he's a smaller figure, yes, and obviously. There was a lot of design changes that were made in the cartoon version of Slash. I wasn't really a big fan of the design. I mean, for what it is, at least it's more canon to the cartoon. But if I had the choice and I only had the budget available to pick up one Slash, most definitely it would be this guy right here. This Slash, just for me, didn't cut it. Not because his name was simply just Slash. I'm going to move that, though, to the side. I'm getting a closer look, though, at Slash. I mean, there's nothing really at all I would have changed this one. It's a stellar, stellar-looking Slash. I like the way, first of all, this also, I think, reminds me of the Tournament Fighters. Somebody may correct me down below in the comment section. The Tournament Fighters cover 
where I had a very similar looking face to this. What you get here, though, is a nice dark swamp green. It gives really a nice chance for those, those big eyes done here in white. I love how this eye is bigger than the other. That's such a classic cartoon. It's not a classic comic thing to do. The teeth, as you can see, are more fangs than teeth, and they've been outlined again in that nice black. The black is the thing that really is the star of the show. Not only is it on teeth, but also the black bandana really pops against an otherwise dark-looking figure. He's got little tiny notches here again, slashes done in black. He's got black there all over his arms, accenting all these nice little warts that he has on the front and the back of the biceps. You've got, again, all these little cross-hatching slashes there that, again, you would recognize right away in the panels of the comics. Like, he does still have the armor here on the top of his shoulder, which, again, the most closest one I can compare it to is the one that came into, from the Turtles in Time release. Had very similar in white. The cartoon version of Slash, I keep bringing back in all these other Slashes, do bear with me. But he also did have this similar plate there on his shoulder. But I think I like it a lot more, though, as it's actually made of just, like, smaller panels of wood, all stitched together. Getting as close as I possibly get as well. Is that too close? Maybe that's too close. You can see, actually, there's like a wood grain on the actual shoulder. Attention to detail definitely does not get overlooked on this figure. The, the actual elbow pads, the wrist pads, and also the knee pads are all done here in brown. But what they do also get here, in the case of the knee pads and the elbow pads, there's a little protruding spike. You can see that is painted in a similar blue to the weapons that we looked at earlier. Again, he does have the little spikes, so we want to be careful of those. But they also do have, again, that bottom treatment done in blue, top treatment done here in white. The colors are really bright on this guy where there's bright. All the rest of it, again, is like the, the darker green. But again, like all the things that are on this guy featured for sculpting get a, a chance to be showcased by all the nice additional black that they add to the figure. The figure does have pretty large feet, although because he has a, such a large shell, I find the figure has a little more problems when it comes to standing. I myself, when it comes to displaying Slash, like to lean him a little further forward just to kind of counterbalance the idea that he's got so much weight happening here on the back of the figure's body. Let's look at the figure's articulation. You probably can already tell I'm loving this figure already. For the head sculpt on Slash, the head is on a ball joint. Now, the way the ball joint actually is working, instead of actually being a post that sticks straight up like a chimney, it sticks out more like a car exhaust. I don't know why I use that as a, as a comparison. But the head does rotate all the way around. But when it does rotate, it's only rotating this way out. The head does look up, but only by just a little bit. And the head does look down a lot more than does look up. As for the shoulders, the shoulders do rotate all the way around. Even despite for the fact he does have a little shoulder plate on the side, you can also hinge the, the, the shoulders out. But this is a little bit more where the limitations come into play. Just because he's got this and because he's got the back of the shell, a lot of times the arm is going to be butting against that. And you can kind of feel there's a little bit of resistance also as well when you bring the, the arms out any further than a 45 degree angle bend. The figure does have uh, no bicep swivel, which was kind of surprising. Uh, oh, actually, this one does have it. So maybe this one was just tight. Yeah, this one's just a little bit tighter. But yeah, he does have bicep swivel. The figure has a double hinge on the elbow. I just removed the hands. You know what? Let's just pop a new, new hand into place. That's one of the benefits of having all these extra hands here on the side. Just pop that back into place. Going back to the hand, though, the hand does rotate back and forth. Uh, the upper torso, like the earlier cartoon turtles, does have a, an actual ball joint on the inside. It's a little harder, of course, to move because there's so much more turtle to move. But he does actually have an upper torso ball joint. You just can't do as much with it that you could do with the earlier cartoon turtles. As for the legs, the legs I've noticed here on Slash are just a tad bit loose, but nothing where it's the figure's going to have some difficult time to stand. The ball joints at least allow the legs to split, so you can get Slash to split about that far. You can take as well the legs and move them forward. You can move them back. And because of the way they're also pegged in place, you can also slightly swivel the top of the thigh. The figure has a double hinge on the knee, and then when it comes to his ankle, the ankles move up and down this way. And they also rock back and forth this way as well. While I'm just looking down on the floor to figure out where they're at, that fist fell too. Let's just put back in Slash here. This is again from the Archie Adventures, the Archie Comics Turtles Adventures. And again, bring in the other Slash figures that we've looked at over spaced out over the course of this channel. And here's what he looks like with the Turtles in Time to the left. Here's what he looks like to the cartoon Slash on the right. I feel at least the one that's met in the middle is the superior of the three. Up to this point, I really did like the Turtles in Time Slash. I still really do. To this point, I still don't like still don't like the cartoon Slash. It doesn't work for me on any level whatsoever. Maybe because I was more already biased into going into seeing Slash in the cartoon that I recognized him right away as not being anything close to the original Playmate Slash. So he was right away not something I was interested in. I like the idea that at least he's tied into the cartoon. 
And for that reason, he still sits, sits predominantly on my shelf with the rest of the characters from the Turtle cartoon that NECA have released. But by far, though, if I was to part it in the middle, this is the one that I'm going to have displayed along with the cartoon Turtles, whether he actually appeared in the cartoons or not. Pardon my biasness for saying this, but I would say not only is this the best Slash figure that NECA has released of the three that we've already had a look at, the Turtles in Time version, and then what I feel to be the inferior cartoon Slash not only is it the best Slash that we've gotten, but it might also be one of the best Turtle figures we've gotten in recent memory. Now, that's a big, bold statement to say. Could you back that up a little bit? I can do my best. First of all, the one thing I really like about the Slash is his size. That's one thing that the Turtles in Time Slash did an okay job. That's one thing that the unfortunate other Slash did from the cartoon very badly. He was way too small. For me, Slash needs to be big. He needs to be bigger than the Turtles. And this one, even though he's not technically part of cartoon canon most definitely will be displayed along with the rest of my cartoon turtles i like the darker color scheme that works really well in this figure even though when you look at it you would imagine that a lot of dark swamp green like this would only just make the figure look too dark not the features having to be popped or standing out quite the contrary though all the things on this figure pop even though he's really on a very dark green plastic body not only the bandana being black, but all the panel lining that they managed to put into the figure's details. So things like warts, things like musculature, all pop with big, bold black lines. The white also does help as well to accent all those features. Not only that, but it also allows one big giant eye to pop on the figure's head, a lot bigger than the other one next to it. Now, looking at that, that does remind me again, I think, of Tournament Fighters. Tournament Fighters, I think, had the cover that had, it was a Slash or one of the, I think it was one of the Turtles themselves, but it had a big giant eye. For some reason, I keep going back to the eye. That's the thing that kind of reminds me of that cover. Uh, the green also does work well for the back on the shell. The shell, though, obviously, there's a lot of plastic being used for the back of the figure's body, so it's going to be making him a little bit more back-heavy than probably some of the other slashes where we had a look at. But bar none, this is the best slash that we've gotten from NECA. And again, if you were to ask me, what are, the, what are your favorite turtle figures that you looked at here on this channel? This guy, this guy right here. I'm not pointing at myself either. I'm not, it's not two thumbs, this guy. No, this guy right here that's spinning around right now in the rotisserie may make my top 10 favorite figures that NECA have done for the turtles, whether it's cartoon canon or not. Slash is a, an incredible looking figure from the folks over at NECA. What do you guys think of Slash? Let me know down below in the comments section. I know I'm a hard person to read. I know it was kind of hard to kind of gauge whether I actually like this figure, but do you like this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Archie Comics Turtle Adventures Slash. Once again, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of Adventures Slash that we can have a look at in this video. If you guys certainly as well enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the crucial subscribe button down below and turn on over, move on over, and turn on the bell notification. So you're going to get reminders, yes, every single time, yes, a new video pops up here on this channel. Because while we have wrapped up things right now for Slash, there will be more NECA reviews coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.